and let's see it dance. Hello and welcome back to SciTitech. In this video, I'm going to share it and build this Oto robot that is powered by an Arduino Nano. Let's get started. These are the items that you're going to need to build this robot. The items you're going to need 3D printed housing, a USB cable to program the Oto robot, four servos, a 4AA battery pack holder, an Arduino Nano, the servo control board, which you can connect the Arduino Nano to and to connect the servos to, and connect the uh, ultrasonic sensor to connect to this as well. And you'll also receive a piezo buzzer, which will connect to this board, an on-off an on -off lock switch, which will, a push-button lock switch, which will connect to this board, some cables that will connect to the board and connect to these two components, and servo connectors to be able to use it to connect these moving parts and screws that you'll need to be able to attach the servos and the connection to all of the housings. And now let's go ahead and assemble this project and let's get started. First you need to assemble these four items to create the feet for the robot. Take your servo, place it in just like this, attach the servo head just like that, and make sure that the servo is facing a 90 degree angle and you're able to rotate the servo in a full 180 degree angle, just like this. Put in your screw. And there, the first foot is ready. And repeat the same process with the second foot. And there you have it, both feet are now ready. Next, let's assemble this bottom housing so that way you can be able to build the legs for the robot. Attach two servos in those two holes. Place it in just like that. Take your screws and screw the servos in. And repeat the same process with the second servo. And there we go, she'll look just like this. Next, you're going to need to attach the leg pieces to the servos. Take your servo head and drop it in just like this. And I do admit this part is the trickiest part. You have to almost wiggle it around to be able to have it flush at the bottom just like that. Push it down flat and then attach it to the servo and make sure the leg piece is parallel with the base of the housing. And make sure it turns a full 180 degrees just like that. Take your screw and screw it into place. And now repeat the same process with the other leg. Screw it into place, test it. And there we go, it should look just like this. Next, attach the feet to the legs of the robot. Place it in just like that. 
screwed into place. And there we go, it should look just like this. Next, you're going to take your ultrasonic sensor and place it into the robot head just like that. Next, you're going to need to take the Arduino Nano and plug it into the servo motherboard just like this. There we go, it should look just like that. Next, you're going to take the servo motherboard and place it inside of the robot head. Place it in just like that. Next, you take your screws and screw in the servo motherboard into place. But be careful, don't screw the screws in too deep. If you do, they'll stick out of the other end. And this is what happens if you screw it in too far. This will happen. But there we go, it should look just like this. Next, you're going to need to take your battery pack and place it inside of your robot. Just like that. Okay, so far I've already discovered a minor problem with this project. As you can see, I want to be able to power it, but these wires are already wires that have the insulation removed. They don't have male connectors that are like these, or female connectors that are like these that can connect to the board directly. Meaning that in the instructions, if you followed it where you place this in first and screw it in, and then you attach the power, that's not possible, because you can't find which hole is which to plug in the VCC and and connect the ground and you can't tell where it's connected. So what you're going to have to do now unfortunately is go a little bit backwards by unscrewing the board and take it back out again. Now you have to look underneath the board because it's not labeled on top, it's labeled underneath, which is a slight problem. So that means the only problem is it's because you have to take it out. And then what you have to locate is right here, the VIN and the ground. And if you're building this and you don't have a soldering iron and this is just a project that you hope to just plug everything in, you can't, unfortunately. You're going to have to use a soldering iron and solder these wires into the proper location. And to do that, let's just simply take the positive and slip it through the hole. Slip it through the hole that's right here. Called VIN. And then just solder that in. And then repeat the same process with the ground. So now I'm going to go ahead and solder this into place. Next, what you need to do is take your positive wire and solder it to the voltage input, which is also known as VIN. Solder it into place. Take your negative wire and solder it to ground. And there we go, she'll look just like this. Cut off the excess. And there we go, she'll look just like this. Since this circuit does not have a switch yet, I need to remove one of the batteries to turn off the circuit. Next step, you're going to need this piezo, some wires, and this push button lock switch. The next step, what I need to do is I need to cut the positive wire to attach my push button lock switch in between. 
so that way the circuit will have a switch. But first I'm going to take my servos and connect them to the servo motherboard. And as you can see, these servos are color coded. This brown wire represents negative or ground, this red wire represents positive or voltage, and this orange wire represents servo or signal wire. What I need to do is I need to connect these servos to their necessary positions. Next I want to connect my first servo to pin 2 and make sure the wires are aligned properly. The servo right here is my second servo. The servo next to that is the first servo. So I'm going to connect the second servo to pin 3, which is right here. And there we go, should look just like this. Next, I'm gonna take my third servo, and I'm gonna connect that to pin four. Next, I'm gonna take my fourth servo and connect that to pin five. And there we go, connected to pin five. And there, the servos are now connected. Next, I'm going to take my ultrasonic sensor and connect that to the servo motherboard. And this right here is the pinout to this circuit. I want to take these wires and connect them to the proper pins. And it should look just like this. Memorize the color coordination and follow the colors to the proper pins. Yellow wire goes to the pin 8 servo. Orange wire goes to pin 9 servo. Red wire goes to positive, doesn't really matter which positive. And the ground goes to ground, doesn't matter which ground. And there, should look just like this. Next, I'm going to connect my piezo to the servo motherboard. And as you can see, this pin right here is positive, and the other pin is negative. Connect the positive to the signal, which is signal 10, and connect the negative to ground. And there we go, your piezo is now connected and it should look just like this. And there we go, the circuit is almost complete. What I need to do next is I want to take my push button lock switch and connect it to that positive wire that I mentioned earlier. But first, I'm going to clip off the unnecessary pins. And there we go, should look just like this. Those two pins are the necessary pins for the circuit. Next, I'm going to connect the positive wire, just like this. Remove the insulation. Put some shrink tubing, then solder 10 the switch, solder 10 the wires, solder tinning everything will make soldering a lot easier, just like this. And there we go, and there we go, should look just like this. Push the switch on, and it stays on. Perfect. Push the switch off, and the switch stays off. And there, the circuit is now complete. Take your shrink tubing, put it in just like that, shrink it, and that way your circuit is now insulated. And there we go, the circuit is now complete. Now let's go ahead and put everything inside of the housing and close it up. First I'm going to take my piezo and place it right here. And as you can see, another problem, the piezo is not staying. So what I need to do is take some super glue and glue it into place. There we go. Now let's go ahead and put the rest of the circuit back inside of the housing, just like this. Take my screws, screw it back in. And same problem as the piezo, this push button switch won't stay into place. 
So I'm going to need to get some super glue and glue it into place. Which is going to go right here where that square is. And that's where I can push it on and off from underneath. And there we go, glue it into place just like that. Now I notice another problem. It's not long enough, so I'm going to have to cut the positive wire and extend it. I have the insulation removed on both ends, and I'm extending the wire. Add some more shrink tubing to keep it insulated, and there. The positive wire is now extended. Now, glue the switch back into place. And there we go, it should look just like this. Hold it down and make sure it stays into place. Next, I'm going to get my hot glue and glue the switch better into place. Since this is going to be a mechanical issue, where I'm going to be constantly pushing the button, I don't want it to risk pushing the button out of socket. So I'm going to get some hot glue to glue it into place better. Perfect, and it should look just like this. And there we go, everything is now ready to be closed up. So I'm going to go ahead and put my housing in and, oops, I noticed another issue. I'm going to need to remove those servo wires and tuck them in differently by pushing them in through the hole just like this so that way I can close the top better. And to make this robot not have so many wires sticking out of it. And there we go, should look just like this. Now, close up the housing. Bend all the wires into place. It's a very tight fit, but it'll work. And there, your robot is now complete. Okay, and there. The robot should look just like this. And then of course, I turn it on. You have the switch right here. Turn it on. Now, on to the next USB cable. I'm going to go ahead and connect this USB cable to connect to the Arduino Nano. Plug it in. And then go ahead and take your robot and plug it into your computer. Transfer our code. And your robot will be alive. And this right here is the website that you need to go to be able to transfer your code to your robot. I have this link down in the description below where you can visit this website and I give full credit to this maker of this code. All you need to do is you need to copy and paste this code by highlighting the entire code just like this. Right click, copy. Go to your Arduino program, right click, paste, and there you have the code. And then just simply go press upload, and of course it's going to ask you to save, so save the code, and now press upload, and the code will be uploading to your robot. Okay, so now I've just uploaded the code, and now it's time to turn it on and test it out. As you can see, I have the push button switch, and we're going to go ahead and press it, and let's see it dance.
Thank you for watching SciTai Tech. I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTai Tech videos. Till the next tech. Goodbye.